Hi! Today we're going to update the last change that we made that was creating all the empty boxes and we're actually going to make it so that it spawns the actual Bad Logic logo inside of these shapes and maintains the correct rotation. So the first thing that we need to do is update our transform component so that it actually keeps track of the rotation of the shape because we use the transform component to determine where to render the object, we also need to use it to keep track of the scale and rotation. So we have our transform component, and we want to also specify the uh, rotation. Let's uh, put the units in here so we remember. And it's going to be a float. And we also want the, uh, the scale because it's going to be a smaller shape. And we actually want this to be vars because obviously the, the valve doesn't, the, the scale doesn't change, but the angle changes pretty regularly. And so that's that. Uh, but if we go back to our, our game, we can see everywhere that it was referring to transform component is now failing. So let's introduce a secondary constructor that has the same signature as before and it just calls this with the position and let's say just zero for the angle and zero uh, and one for the scale that should not be a val and now we're set um, so it's not being read anywhere, and it's not. It's going to be immediately fall out of sync with its corresponding physics object. So if we go to our physics synchronization system, we also want to go uh, entity dot transform dot angle radian equal to the entity dot physics dot body dot angle. And if you look at the angle here, it says the angle is in radians, so this is definitely it's consistent. We're referring to body twice here, so we might as well just factor this out and uh, reduce some of the duplication. Um, so in my GDX game, we're instantiating a uh, texture component. Texture component takes textures. Um, textures don't have a lot of super useful components, uh, methods and things directly on them. If you look here, like there's no rotation, there's no angle. If you have a batch and you want to call it draw, um, none of the overloads that takes texture, which is starting here. Um, there is there is actually one that takes rotation, but it takes it takes all these other parameters as well, and we don't really want to provide all of those. So instead, you'll notice that texture region is also here and takes has a version that takes fewer parameters. So um, uh, we we could use texture, but as you know, for sake of example, we're going to use texture region. Uh, texture region is very similar, except that it represents a uh, a subset of the of the texture. It's a rectangular area within the texture. Uh, so we are actually going to have a texture region that's the entire size of the texture. But if you wanted to sort of make your own sprites where the texture region is a subset of the texture, this is one possible class you could use for that. So we are going to uh, create a texture region component and it's going to look just like texture except be texture region. Let's go ahead and plop that in here. Texture region.
and I think we're set. So if we go back here, what we want to use this texture region for is in our input adapter, whenever we click uh, on the screen, we want to drop uh, a cube that has this texture region component on it. So what we want to do is say texture region and pass in the image. However, the image isn't available anywhere here because it's an instance field on my GDX game. So for now, what we can just do is uh, basically make it static. So if you say companion object and move this guy over here, um, that will work. That will work well enough. So now if we say my GDX game dot image, now it'll work. So if we run, actually it won't still won't work if we run, but if we run, you can see that it's still it's not actually rendering yet because our rendering system doesn't know what to do with a texture region component. So if we looked at our rendering system, it's still just assuming texture component. Uh, so the family dot all is actually a sort of a, a chainable builder, and so you can say um, family dot all, and then one, which means it means at least one, at least one of the specified components. So you can say anything that has transform component, and then either texture component and or texture region component. So now we'll get both, now we get all those classes, uh, all those entities that have both of these on it, or either, either of these on it. However, now if you look at texture, here texture uh, calls texture component.get and passes this, and this will be null, and then this will return, this will throw a null pointer exception when looking at texture region component. So if you look at the type of texture, um, well, it's actually it just, it says it's just texture component, but I think it's actually texture bang. Anyway, so here, what we want to do is we want to say if it has a texture component, render that. Otherwise, if it has a texture region component, render that. Um, and sort of the, there's a clever way of doing this because Kotlin has lots of clever ways of doing things. And um, one of and the way I like to do this is by creating another extension method on entity called try get. And this will attempt to get a particular component if it's present. And if it's not present, it just returns null. And you can actually return uh, you can actually just say if it has a component resolver, then you can just pass that in instead. And this returns a, a T. We haven't defined what T is yet. T is whatever you want it to be. And when we call get, it returns component resolver. Ah, this is a function. That's why it's complaining. So we don't define get, we just have a function here. And we return component resolver dot mapper. And we check to see. Hmm. That's not really necessary. We can just call get and that return and, and pass in this. And we return you know a optional t value here. And we're making it very explicit that it's an optional t value. So this t is complaining here because it's expecting component resolver. Com component resolver requires a generic of type component, and we're passing in a unbounded generic. So we can actually just bound it here, and now it's happy. So if we go back to rendering system, and 
we want all this to execute if only only if uh, texture component is present. So we can say entity dot try get texture component. And one thing that's interesting here is this is actually valid. You don't have to say class dot java or anything because texture components singleton companion object implements component resolver. So we're not passing in texture component itself, we're passing in texture components companion object. And that's really nice actually. So now if you call let and you say texture component, you can perform operations on texture component. However, texture component here is still knowable. It still has this question mark on the end, which means we might have to say if not to, uh, if texture component not equal to null, and now texture component, well, it's not showing it here, but it's now just, you, you don't need to uh, do any more null checks. And that's not very convenient though, so we can actually fix that. You can see here it's texture, texture component question mark. You can actually change let, sorry, add a question mark there, and now texture component is the non-nullable type. And that just means let is only called if it's not null. So now we can just take all this stuff and move it in here. And now this executes only if texture component is present. And we might as well use it since we have it. Okay, so we have this other rendering object that we have now, texture region component. And we're going to start out doing the same thing. So again, we need the image, but it's coming off of a slightly different object. And this will come in handy a bit later, but we need the width and the height in world units. And finally we need the scale. So now we need to do our draw and we're going to use the simplest one that has rotation, which is this one right here. But it takes a lot of parameters, so let's go through it one by one. So first one it starts out, it requires the image, and that's just our texture region, and you can see it grays out uh, half of our overloads, roughly. Um, and the next one is X and Y, which is our position, and for position, we're going to specify, okay, actually, we need position, and it's right here, so let's hoist that up. There's position at x, and we're going to subtract the half width of the object, because remember that the, this is drawing the lower left corner, and really we want to draw from the middle. Uh, where the, the position should be representing the middle of the object, not the corner of the object, so that's why we need to offset the, the x location by the, the size of the object. So we're doing the same thing with the height. And now we have origin x and origin y. And for that, uh, we want the middle of the object. So you can say width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. The origin is used for, for rotation, otherwise it would rotate funny. And next we have width and height. This, one, this, one, this one's easy, I can just specify the width and the height. And then next is the scale x and scale y, which is the same for both of them. And finally we have rotation. So if you look at this you have no idea whether it wants radians or degrees, because it's not documented in the method. So let's specify entity.transform dot angle radian. And if you go look at the method, 
Okay, so there's nothing in the documentation here. If you go up to the interface, the batch interface, um, draws a rectangle with bottom left corner at XY. Rotation specifies the angle of counterclockwise rotation of the rectangle around, around origin XY. Still doesn't say whether it's angles or radians. But if you look where rotation is being used, if rotation is not equal to zero, then it takes the cosine degree, sine degree of rotation. So they actually need, need degrees here. And we have radians. So we're going to define a little helper method called two degrees, which assumes that you have radians. And it's going to be an extension property just a float called two degrees. And it returns a float. And, uh, and to get it, um, there's a uh, math utils class that, that, uh, that libgdx provides that's pretty handy. has a lot of, a lot of lovely constants. And one of the constants that it provides is radians two degrees, which is just this simple little math expression here. But now you can multiply, well, as you can see, you can multiply a radian amount by this to convert it to two degrees. So if you just do that, radians two degrees times this, now it does what we want. So if we hit run, okay, so it's almost, so it's sort of doing what we wanted to do. Um, it's, it's too large though, so that's pretty easy. We already have scale here, so I think we just need to go over to my GDX game and make the scale significantly smaller. So for texture region, no, actually it's for transform, after the vector 2, we, we I mean, the angle doesn't really matter here because it gets immediately reset by the physics object. Over scale, let's try 0 0.25. That happens to be perfect. So now, whenever when you're spamming your spamming your boxes, they all rotate correctly, and um, yeah. So in general, like you could do this with texture. Texture region is a little bit easier. Um, sprite is more stateful and actually has uh, has rotation, I believe. Yeah, if you look at sprite, it has an innate rotation field, so that makes it even easier to rotate. You just say where you want it on the screen and it's just there and rotated correctly. But if you're using texture region, this is a reasonable way to go about it. All right, so this is the last video, I think, of just sort of randomly explaining how you do various things. I'm going to come up with a sort of a, a simple game idea and talk about developing it from start to finish. So stay tuned for that.